to try one and three. Okay, well in piano and guitar class, I have like a little setup here with my instruments. And I actually have like a second device camera so they can see my hands while we play. And we have days where each instrument meets and I play an example and they unmute and they have the camera on them and they're playing an example and we kind of break it down one at a time. So it kind of is just like normal class where I'm seeing everyone play and they're playing for me. I'm doing some similar things with my choir kids where they get to listen to a lot of choirs, sing um, examples for me on a program called Flipgrid where they upload um, a video of themselves singing and I can give them feedback. We're learning a lot of theory. So it's a little different online because we're not singing all together, but we're learning a lot about how music works and our voices. Yeah, so you can, if you like uh, Duke basketball and you're obsessed with Duke basketball, you can talk about Duke basketball as much as possible. So the breakout rooms have been really helpful as far as creating that um, social school experience, right? So some of the feedback I was getting from the first week was that uh, the kids miss talking with each other, especially in that small group. It can be a little tricky in a large uh, Google meeting. And so having the breakout rooms gives me a chance to hear all the different voices. They feel more comfortable talking with their peers. And, uh, and also if the material is you know, too difficult or they're having trouble, they can rely on each other to kind of work through some of the problems that they might be having. So now I'm going to review what I've talked about so far. And tomorrow we will finish these notes up. But again, I wanted to make sure you guys understood the Middle Ages so you can understand the difference between the Middle Ages and the Renaissance because we'll talk about that. So this is the time where you guys can either type your answer in the chat, you can write it down if you want, you can hold up your fingers if you want. And which event occurred last? The development of language, the invention of the wheel, hunting and gathering or control of fire. When you come across a question like this, it's really of a process of elimination. So which one have we not even mentioned in class yet? There it is. You can see it's submitted right there. And then he's going to click turn in. And then, yep, going to click turn in again. They want to make sure you're, you're sure about that turning in process. Okay, so we're starting the most dangerous game. We're going to read the first eight lines. We're going to read those together. And then I want you to tell me, like, out of those eight lines, what are we supposed to be feeling? Because our author has put a lot of effort into establishing our atmosphere. Off there to the right, somewhere is a large island, said Whitney. It's rather a mystery. What island is it, Rainsford asked. What are the two feelings that we're supposed to probably have? Kind of suspenseful, but also, it's like, it's edging towards suspenseful and creepy and the unknown. Trois, treize, quatre, quatorze. The same thing holds true when you get up into the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Um, take a look at the screen now. Good morning, millionaires. This is the way I like to start my class, and I have a little character that kind of helps me with uh, my different lessons. Good morning, millionaires. Now, I know some of you are thinking, it's not the morning. I just figured that uh, all the students are seeing their teacher's lecture, so I thought it'd be a little bit different to try something, maybe catch their attention a little bit more using my little character, Hal P. Hands. It's actually, I think it's made me a better teacher. It's, it's made me be more conscious of what the students are um, looking for and, and trying to meet their needs. I've been having fun with it. Uh, the first couple days, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? But, but, but now we're really getting into the rhythm of it. We, we started a, a protocol. They come in, they, they, they look at the day's assignment. I usually give them a warm-up question. Um, and then I have the assignments for the day and for the week on there. And um, we do warm-ups. Um, I, I have enough space here. I, I purposely wanted space where I could stand and I could talk to them. I can see all their faces on here. It's, it's, been, it's been new. Um, and, and, and for someone who's been teaching, you know, 20 plus years, um, this is like year one again, but, but it's been exciting. The metric system to communicate across many different languages. So that's the idea really behind the metric system and specifically using scientific measurements. So today we're going to go through these. So notes. we decided that we were going to take a look around and with help from my teenage boys, we decided that what we wanted to do was provide something that they use on YouTube or Twitch to broadcast video games. So it ended up, we ended up using a software called Open Broadcast Software, and that allows us to produce our own base webcast, podcast, if you will, in that format so that we can broadcast that out to students in their own home. And it's a little bit more entertaining. It gives us a little bit more control over 
what kids are seeing on their screen. It's a little bit smoother a process as far as workflow is concerned. And it just adds that ability to be able to, in a sane environment, be able to provide content, but in a fun way. We play Quizlet every day. Uh, it really kind of hooks them. They really show up to class on time and it's the thing that they do every day. I haven't had to write one bathroom pass. I haven't had to step out into the hallway. I haven't had the distractions that you have sometimes in these four walls, which has allowed me to direct all my attention to the instruction, to the content, and be able to give student feedback on what their experiences are, both on my end and on their end. Which is worse, this or this? This? Or this. Okay, I see it. Okay, so if you'll click on that, when you okay. open it up, you're going to open it up with Cami. Um, he couldn't have gotten away with this type of activity. I get you into all kinds of apps. I, I make you talk. I make you write journals. I make you talk to me. That's what's exciting. And to keep you organized, I even keep myself organized right there. Everything is there to do. Anything that I can do to help, emails, phone calls, anything I can do for every single student, that's what's important to me. Okay, and then once again, this is kind of where we're at back with Hayden. We're back to our algebraic base. Here's my transversal, and as soon as I have that, I can be like, okay. Well, hey guys. Who's excited to learn? All right, so here's how Chef rolls. Chef can stand here, you guys are there, the learning stuff is here, and then there's like education happening. Uh, let's see. Uh, chef's got a clicky doodle. Look. All right, all right. See what we got? We got the. So this pan is what's getting used. So this is a uh, sautuse pan. We can tell it's a sautuse because it has a nice rounded edge. And when we sauté stuff, we put a little bit of oil in there. We put our food items. And you ever see those movies where the chefs are sitting there and they're just like flipping all of the stuff in the pan? This pan is designed for that with that rounded edge, and it lets you stir in the cooking process. That's what sauté means. All right, Piper, you wrote Theocracy. Good job. That's another one, too. And what was the other one? Dictatorship. Okay, you're on a roll this morning. Good job. Y'all did your work. I like that. Okay, so these are the cells that we're looking at. What do you notice that is in all of those cells? The way I kind of remember to see how hole right in the middle has that zero. It has an O. So that's how I remember it adds a zero. So I'm going to talk about irrational first. Have you guys ever been told that you're being irrational? Have mom and dad ever said that? And come on, you're just being yeah. ir... No? I bet somebody's mama. Technology that we've been um, afforded has allowed me to open up and get a lot more responses for the kids, to hear their voices. In class, I'd have one or two students, maybe three who would participate and tell me what they saw in that cartoon. With Pear Deck, which is the program I'm using for this one, I've got 15 or 22 responses, so I get a much broader sense of what they're thinking um, and whether they've uh, understood the concept, as well as getting a variety of ideas and them getting a variety of ideas from their peers. Uh, in the past, when I've asked students to define things, I'd get them into groups and get five or six different answers. Uh, with Jamboard, I can get 15, 20, 25 different answers. We're playing with smart music or different things coming from, from my computer, streaming through to them. And so while I can't hear them, they can hear what's going on here. And so we're playing along with recordings uh, while they follow along on music on their Chromebooks. So we have our one chord, our four chord, it's using that same motion that we were just talking about. So I'm going to hit play on this, and let's go back to um, just play Roots. So the students went to the site, and they can zoom in on birds. When you click on a bird, it tells you a little bit of something what the bird is about, and you can go, scroll down, and the bird will make its noise. And I pulled up the bird, and we listened to it, and then another student said, oh, I have that bird, like right here in my room, in my house. And then he took his Chromebook and we went and actually saw the real bird that we were looking at on the screen. And then he's like, I have these other birds too. And we saw it was like having a field trip in the middle of class. It never would have happened if we were doing regular school. We would have just, um, he would have said, I have a bird at home. And 
we would have said, that's really interesting. Maybe he would have shown us a picture. But instead, we had a little mini field trip in class. Some things that I have come to embrace with this new style of learning is the interactive nature of what's going on with students. In my television production classes, uh, we have some software that the students can use uh, with their phones at home in order to uh, make films. Uh, they can edit their projects. Then we go together on the Google Meet. We can view each other's projects and critique them. In my leadership class, it's a great way for students to engage in breakout rooms. I know some other teachers are doing that as well uh, in order for students to uh, collaborate on projects uh, to bring different activities and events uh, in this virtual world uh, into fruition. I made sure that each kid had a supply pack of all the things that they were going to need to do their projects. We do uh, live demonstrations. I've been videoing my demonstrations for them and um, we do live project checks. So I'm having them pop on screen, show me what they're doing, show me their work. The entire class gets to see it and they can see you know, some of the other ideas that are floating throughout the room. Um, in the beginning, I took a lot of time to get to know them and do icebreakers with them. We did a bring your pet to class day last Friday. So we all got to share our pets and kind of chit chat a little bit about you know, things that are going on at home and stuff like that. Um, in earth science class, we're trying to keep it lively by inc incorporating games and ed puzzles and um, CK12, which has these things called PLIX, which are interactives that we're using in addition to the regular um, PowerPoints and, and discussion. Everybody gets a voice, you know, instead of the, like maybe a couple people in the class who are always the ones who are talking or answering questions or asking questions, um, everybody gets a chance to speak up. Um, or everybody gets a chance to focus and concentrate, concentrate because the distractions are now muted. <laughs> the other thing is I think I, I'm able to talk to more of my students, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. They'll, they'll, they'll pop into office hours and ask me for help, um, and some of those students may not have asked for help in the past. To engage our students in the library, we've been working really hard on making some how-to videos and setting up um, a click-and-pull model for our books, kids will be able to put books on hold, and from that list, we'll be able to pull them and have them ready to be able to be picked up in the in the main office. Um, we're also starting our online book club, and that will start. We'll meet once a week. And we talked about you know natural talents and what that meant, and mental talents, physical talents, social talents. Remember, I said, Mr. Ward, you know, singing, ah, oh, not a very good talent of mine, right? And so that's one of the things we talked about. And what were your talents? What are you good at? You know, they're doing a great job with the virtual. It's given them a chance to learn about technology. They're also getting typing skills in at the same time. Also, a lot of students are speaking out that normally wouldn't in class because, you know, they don't look at it as they're around their peers. They're just kind of talking to their computer. So a lot of students that typically don't speak as much are speaking a lot more in class now. And, you know, it's, it's just it's been really, really successful. Our students... You know, we are, we're having about 100% um, participation every single day. It's also really nice because a lot of parents are able to get on and ask questions if they have questions. You know, a lot of times kids leave the school building and go home. Parents don't really know what's happening during the day or what may have happened unless we email them or they email us. But this gives us exact communication right then. You know, the parents there, hey, Mr. Ward, what did you say she needed to do? Or, hey, Mr. Ward, what was that... Um, you know, assignment, we need to work a little bit more on that. I heard they were struggling a little bit. And as soon as we get off, we'll work on that this afternoon. And then, you know, you come back the next day and you see that the kid actually has improved a whole lot. We would love to thank the community. Um, they have definitely stepped up. A lot of churches, businesses have um, students to come in, whether it's um, to use their Wi-Fi, use the building so that they can have access to the Internet. I also know there are groups that are formed where different people have decided, hey, look, you guys can come over to our house, um, use our Wi-Fi. We're also going to be getting hotspots out to a lot of the students that don't have internet access. So that's another way that you know we here at the school have decided to step up and help those those our students out also because we don't want anyone to go without. Um, we're going to make the best out of the situation, and we want to make sure that every student has an opportunity to be successful.